But in America, we resolve our differences at the battle box. You know, that's how we do it, at the battle box, not with bullets. So, you heard it here first. Americans resolve their differences not with bullets, but in the battle box, which I assume is something like the, uh, the Thunderdome in Mad Max. I mean, okay, all right. You know, fair enough. Uh, Joe Biden got mixed up with bullets and ballot boxes and battles and tweedle beetles and a muddle puddle, waddle fuddle, poodles on noodles, right? I would love to see Joe Biden read something by Dr. Seuss. That would be a great occasion. Anyway, uh, what's tonight's video about? Tonight's video is about uh, all of the best and hottest takes on the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. There's some pretty, uh, there's some pretty good ones. Let's get into it. Who's Daniel Boland? Oh, Daniel Boland, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back. Now, a lot of you are going to say I'm nitpicking here, but I think Joe Biden, as he read, time to take a step back, he took a little step back. <laughs> Calls on all of us to take a step back. I know, I know, but it, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time Joe Biden has been uh, bamboozled by a teleprompter. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so, end of quote. Repeat the line. For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. Well, I think that's a message we can all get behind, isn't it? Yeah, thank God former Trump wasn't seriously injured. But, uh, uh, okay, just before we go on with the video, uh, I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, Danny, what is it exactly that you've got in store for us today? Something gay, no doubt. So as I said in the introduction, what I'm going to be doing today is uh, taking a look at some of the hottest takes, some of the reactions to the Trump assassination attempt. Uh, some of them more unhinged than others. Uh, and I'm going to be reacting to those reactions, which is, um, you know, I don't know if this has ever been done before. <laughs> Ah, the self-awareness, eh? That's what you come back for on the Daniel Boland show. Mm. So you're not interested in the salacious personal lives of minor celebrities? And the tried and tested format of the reaction video. We make reaction videos here like it's 2016, okay? And uh, I do feel the need to preface my videos briefly like this now, because I've seen some of the comments uh, you're talking of the uh, structural flaws in my videos. You are just rude. Rude. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know, a bit of an artistic type. I want to make this a bit crazy and spontaneous. I want to, frankly, make videos that are like a Kafkaesque nightmare. Sounds like pelicans are after me now. Oh my god, the pelicans are after me now. There's a whole pack of pelicans wrapping me down. Okay. Uh, so keep me guessing. You don't know what's going on. But uh, I know a lot of you don't want me playing 4D chess. Okay, you want me playing 1D Scrabble. Right? Beginning, end, one straight line. Take me there. All right. I spoke with him last night. I'm grateful. He's doing well. And Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victims who was killed. Corey was a husband, a father, a volunteer firefighter, a hero, sheltering his family from those bullets. We should all hold his family and all those injured in our prayers. Now, that seems like a fairly uncontroversial point that the uh, Tweetle Beetle is making there. But, uh, well, you might be surprised. Uh, do you remember this guy, Destiny? He's featured on my uh, channel before. <laughs> Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound oh, yeah, that they had operated from. Young, they literally Mr. did. You Borelli, can Google it. You can Mr. Google Borelli, it. With all Mr. Due respect, with all due respect, yeah. you're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. He had rather a different take on uh, the guy who died at the Trump rally. Fuck it. Fuck the dude. 
um, the firefighter guy, uh, fuck Trump, fuck the people that support him. I just want you to know, okay, just in case you're confused or it seems like I'm, uh, you don't, whatever. If one of you were in the crowd and you're a conservative fan of mine and you end up, you know, getting blown away or whatever the fuck, I'm making fun of you the next day on Twitter. I am. Now, I may be a raging narcissist, but to me, dying, the worst part about dying is the unbelievable FOMO, the fear of missing out that would be coursing through my spirit or whatever. Uh, imagine dying. And then looking down from heaven and uh, seeing this little pigeon-chested video gaming sexual deviant uh, spreading shit about you on Twitter, right? From behind his little gaming desk. Imagine that. Imagine being uh, the wife of that poor man who died. Uh, the kids, they're, they're listening to that little dweeb talk shit about their dad. I mean, it's very, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, 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 it makes you feel very impotent. Uh, it's uh, humiliating, but it's just part of the world we live in now, you know? People will say all kinds of stuff on the internet. Earlier today, I spoke about an ongoing investigation. We do not know the motive of the shooter yet, we don't know his opinions or affiliations. We don't know whether he had help or support or if he communicated with anyone else. Now, let us not fall into the trap that uh, some of us uh, the other day when uh, tensions were running high. A few of us let our emotions get the better of us on Twitter, didn't we? And, uh, you know, I may have called a few people the C word, the F word, amongst other things. However, now that we've all had a couple of days to uh, cool down, eh? Have you cooled down now, you lunatics? Um, we've had a couple of days to think about this rationally, and uh, I think it is important that we realise that we mustn't fall into the trap of guilt by association. Whatever affiliations this psycho spaz had, right? Um, the overriding, the overwhelming factor in leading him to do what he did was the fact that we were such a big spaz. I'm spasticus! I'm spasticus! I'm spasticus! Autisticus! You know what I mean? Uh, he was a crazy person. Having, having said that, a real problem with our democracies uh, of late, over the last few years, is this uh, growing hyperbole and demagoguery, uh, exaggerating of the threat that the opponent poses to the nation, to the world, and Donald Trump has certainly been a victim of that. What was your thoughts about the assassination attempt? They missed. They missed. They missed. <laughs> do you, do you, yeah, um... He should have died. He's not good for this country, and he never will be. Wow. Ever. He's the worst person that could be ever in politics. He's not even a politician. So you're disappointed that the shooter missed Donald yeah, Trump? 100%. 100%. No, no, well, nothing. Do you he should have died. You... She doesn't like him as much as I do, but she's a little more... Sympathetic to people do you, dying. Do you think that the shooter was justified. He did what he wanted to do. Do you think it was justified? Like, do you think? Do you think in he? His eyes, I'm sure it was. But you know what? Since he missed, I can guarantee you there's going to be 100 people that are going to try to not miss. Would you support that? Yeah, 100%. He doesn't need to live. He doesn't need to be a president. So well, hold on. 100%. Yeah. Why? Why so much hatred for Donald Trump? Because for one, he's a sucker. He grabs people by the pussy. He grabs women by the pussy, right? All right, wait, we're done. Have a good day. Come oh, wait, wait, really oh, quick, no, no, really quick. I want to know, you know, it... God, there's nothing more faggy than passive aggression. Is it like, uh, uh, oh, we're done here. Have a good day. When you've just been so flippant about uh, somebody getting murdered. Uh, people like that sicken me. A former president was shot. An American citizen killed while simply exercising his freedom to support the candidate of his choosing. We cannot, we must not go down this road in America. We've traveled before throughout our history. Violence has never been the answer. Whether it's with members of Congress of both parties being targeted and shot, or a violent mob attacking the Capitol on January 6th, or brutal attack on the spouse of former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, or information and intimidation on election officials, or the kidnapping plot against the sitting governor, or an attempted assassination on Donald Trump, there is no place in America for this kind of violence, for any violence ever, period.
Well, while I agree with almost everything Joe Biden said there, it's a little bit late in the day, if you ask me. Political discourse has broken down to such a degree uh, that uh, <laughs> um, it, really, it really is now a case of the right calling the left communists and the left calling the right Nazis because uh, they know that that evokes a more emotional response in the electorate. Uh, <laughs> when really, if we live in a democracy, they should be sitting down and explaining to us why their policies are better than their opponents. Uh, these facts and figures back it up. And, uh, well, it's a democracy, so we can decide which one sounds better. But it, no, of course, it's much better to say Hitler, Stalin, murder. And um, it's sad, really. No exceptions. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Yes, you do. Because look at the bloody state of the kids. I just found out about this shit. It just happened. I haven't even had a second to process. You're telling me somebody finally had the balls to bring a pew pew. And in this, we were a second away. We were a centimeter away from half of the problem being gone. And you missed. There was a white man attached to that trigger. I know it. We were a centimeter away. Oh. The bullet hit his fucking ear. His ear skimmed his ear, just brushed past him. Oh my fucking God. Why couldn't it have been two inches in and we would have never had to hear about him again? We are going to be hearing about Trump getting shot at that rally for the rest of our fucking lives. He is going to personally make sure none of us ever forget what happened today. I'm so scared he's going to. As if the video wasn't bad enough. Look at these comments. And this is just scrolling through for a few seconds. These comments. Absolutely disgusting and vile. Not only this creator who has a massive platform, but every single one of these people in the comments who are cheering this on with what happened today. As if that wasn't bad enough, we've got our celebrities at it too. Uh, Jack Black and uh, his uh, fat friend from uh, Tenacious D. Look at this. Miss Trump next time. Jack Black's bandmate has been accused of telling a bad joke on stage in Sydney just hours after the attempted assassination of former US President Donald Trump. In footage of the event, Black is seen presenting his Tenacious D band member Kyle Gass with a birthday cake before asking him to make a wish. KG then said, don't miss Trump next time, causing the crowd to erupt. One audience member said, you could hear a couple of oohs, like too soon sort of vibes, but the vast majority was laughter. It's not that it's in poor taste or that it's too soon. It's just not funny seeing a guy in his 60s saying he wished that Donald Trump would be killed. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, it's, what, what is he trying to achieve there? Is he trying to be all edgy and cool and down with the kids? Because that is about as edgy and cool as when uh, one of those teachers at school that swear or mention sex instantly all the kids just lose respect for him. Yes, we have deeply felt strong disagreements. The stakes in this election are enormously high. I've said it many times that the choice in the select that we make in this election is going to shape the future of America and the world for decades to come. Well, you see, there you go again. Hyperbole! All right, we can't have this. We can't have you telling everyone that voting for one party or another uh, will dramatically shape the future of the country and the world for decades to come. Either you believe that, in which case we're kind of fucked. Uh, if people believe that voting Democrat or voting Republican will absolutely save the world or destroy the world, uh, then we're, we're, we're kind of fucked because we're so polarized and we're so far apart from each other uh, that uh, our ideologies and uh, policies can never see eye, we can never see eye to eye on anything. Or, or it's just nonsense and it's just a tactic to win an election. You're scaring people into voting for you because if you vote for the other guy, we're, whoa, the world's going to end. We can't keep talking like that. Uh, I understand that uh, modern politics, it is just a sense, essentially a sales pitch uh, that has been fine-tuned to play on people's emotions. Uh, but the, the, the simplest message is the easiest one. That guy's evil. Don't vote for him. He'll, you'll all die. 
right? But you can't. You can't do that. It's evil to talk like that. It scares people. It makes people tense and nervous, all right? Uh, it, it has to be, uh, we have to calm down. <laughs> we can disagree on policies and stuff, uh, but that's what you should be arguing about. You should be arguing about specific points. If my opponent does this, these will be the consequences, I think, because of this evidence. So I propose we do this, because I believe this is what will happen if you do what I say. Right? You can't just go around telling everyone that the whole world's fucked if you vote for the other guy. It might work to win votes, but it's terrible for society. Disagreement is inevitable in American democracy. It's part of human nature. But politics must never be a literal battlefield, and God forbid, a killing field. I believe politics ought to be an arena for peaceful debate, to pursue justice, to make decisions guided by the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We stand for an America, not of extremism and fury, but of decency and grace. All of us now face the time of testing as the election approaches. And the higher the stakes, the more fervent the passions become. This places an added burden on each of us to ensure that no matter how strong our convictions, we must never descend into violence. The Republican Convention will start tomorrow. I have no doubt they'll criticize my record and offer their own vision for this country. I'll be traveling this week, making the case for our record and the vision, my vision of the country, our vision. I'll continue to speak out strongly for our democracy, stand up for our Constitution and the rule of law, to call for action at the ballot box, no violence on our streets. That's how democracy should work. We debate and disagree. We compare and contrast the character of the candidates, the records, the issues, the agenda, the vision for America. But in America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. You know, that's how we do it, at the battle box, not with bullets. The power to change America should always rest in the hands of the people, not in the hands of would-be assassin. You know, the pass forward, through a competing visions of the campaign should always be resolved peacefully. So for once, I've actually got to say whoever wrote this uh, speech has done a pretty good job. Uh, I think this is a good message. And uh, Joe Biden's just about, he gets to this point reading most of it fairly correctly, apart from the odd battle box. Um, eh, it starts to go off the rails a little bit here, but yeah. You know, we're blessed to live in the greatest country on earth, and I believe that with every soul, every power of my being. So tonight, I'm asking every American to recommit to make America so, make America, what it is to think about. Uh-oh. I'm asking every American to recommit to make America so, make America, what it is. Great again. <laughs> make America so, make America, what it is to think about. It. What's made America so special? Here in America, Everyone must be treated with dignity and respect, and hate must have no safe harbor. Here in America, we need to get out of our silos, where we only listen to those with whom we agree, where misinformation is rampant, where foreign actors fan the flames of our division to shape the outcomes consistent with their interests, not ours. Let's remember, here in America, our unity is the most elusive of goal goals right now. Nothing is more, more important for us now and standing together. We can do this. You know, from the beginning, our founders understood the power of passion. So they created a democracy that gave reason and balance a chance to prevail over brute force. That's the American we must be. An American democracy where arguments are made in good faith. An American democracy where the rule of law is respected. American democracy where decency, dignity, fair play aren't just quaint notions, but living, breathing realities. We owe that to those who come before us, to those who gave their lives for this country. We owe, that, we owe that to ourselves. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren. Look, let's never lose sight of who we are. Let's remember we are the United States of America. There is nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops.
Well, hopefully this is a turning point uh, <laughs> in political discourse. Mm, I really hope it is a turning point in political discourse. God, what a boring dick I sound like tonight. Um, anyway, I think uh, that's about enough for today's video. Um, what have I missed? What have I missed? Let me know in the comments. If you have enjoyed the video, let the algorithm know. Give it a like. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to check out some other content that's not here on YouTube uh, and help out with the channel, you can check out my Patreon. The link's in the description. I'll leave you with the outro video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Rat is this. The rats are all like this. The rat goes like this. So the rat's like this. The normal rat is like this. That's the normal rat. Like this, like this. It sniffs. It's like this for quite a while. He's like this. And then maybe he sniffs. You are now a normal rat. You're ready, man. Most of you aren't foaming at the mouth. And, you know, like fundamentally, why? None of you are stark naked. Why? Why? Why are you wearing jeans? You're doomed. Why are you not afraid?